Hi, Story Wilson with rswsolutions.com. This is a 1996 P38 Range Rover with the infamous air suspension. So today I've got a problem. I've got a leak. I, I, I've uh, already ruled out the air springs as a source of a leak. So the next thing I'm going to investigate is the valve block. The valve block's pretty old in this car. I don't think I've ever replaced the O-rings. So I'll go ahead and show you some of the steps we're going to go today to uh, uh, depressurize the air suspension system, remove the valve block, and begin to investigate and or replace the o-rings in the valve block so before we start we need to depressurize the air suspension and depressurize the main air tank so to do this we're going to use the uh, rsw solutions es unlock version 4. Uh, many people have seen the original es unlock this is a much much newer advanced version to start we're going to plug the usb cable pc with the device that you've received from rsw solutions plug in the obd connector then we're going to work our way through here and you'll see all the new functions that have been added. We're interested in the air suspension depressurize. So we're ready to begin. We're going to go ahead and turn the vehicle key to the second position. The dash display will come on and all the electrics in the vehicle will come on. We're ready to begin. So make sure that the vehicle suspension is absolutely clear of any obstacles. You don't want anything or any persons underneath the vehicle when this happens because we're depressurizing it. It's going to lower drop the vehicle air suspension. So first let's depressurize the front. You'll hear the air suspension beep. And then we're dropping slowly here. Now let's go ahead and depressurize the rear. Rear should be depressurizing now. And next we'll move on to depressurize the tank. The tank, all you're going to hear is just air hissing out. Once the system is fully depressurized, make sure you're aware that there still can be pressure in the system, residual. So be careful. Wear eye protection, ear protection. Make sure the vehicle is nothing underneath it when you're pulling these lines out of the valve block. So we're ready to begin the depressurization of the tank now air suspension is power cycled communications begin now the tank is being depressurized so the system is depressurized and I've, I've gone ahead and removed the intake plenum so we can see this better you don't have to do that um, the air suspension unit and valve block is located here compressor and valve block assembly and these are the pipes that go to each one of the air springs, an air tank, an air dryer. So we're going to go ahead and start by removing each one of these pipes. It's pretty easy to do. I take a pair of needle nose pliers and you'll see, um, it's hard to see, but there's a pipe going into a brass collar. You'll push the collar in and pull the pipe out. And again, be ready for air pressure. There could still be some residual in the system. I went ahead and ran, ran the depressurize a sequence in the EAS Unlock version 4 software twice, just to make sure I got as much out as I could. So this is for example, they're stuck in there pretty good. I'm going to get a little silicone on them to act as a penetrating fluid. Just a little bit here. We'll come back. And work on them. While we're waiting on that, we'll go ahead and release these bolts and pull out the air suspension compressor. Good time too to replace the uh, piston rings and the air compressor if you haven't done it already. So next we're going to go and try these uh, air lines. So we can see the valve block better. It's the valve block is this thing with these cans on top. Here's the EAS driver pack on the back side here. So to remove these you want to make, like I said, you want to push in on the collar and simultaneously pull out of the pipe. Taking care, these needle nose pliers have some little teeth on them. You don't want to scratch up the, the, the uh, air pipe as you pull it out. So sometimes I'll use a, a rag in here. Let's try this. Push in. And you can feel the collar, see the collar actually push in and pull the air pipe out. There we go. There's still some air pressure in there. But not much. We'll need to save for the other ones as well. 
these things just have a better idea what's going on. This, these four air spring pipes here and supply air lines. Um, and you can see the, the collars, how they, uh, they have, you can, they have their kind of pressure fitted. And we'll uh, look at those later. Let's get these connectors out of the way. Go ahead and start to disassemble some of this wiring harness. And we're going to remove this next. This is block. There are a couple of, um, looks like, 8 millimeter bolts right here on the side. I'll need to pull out, and the whole valve block assembly will simply lift out of the housing. Flip off the unit. Now come out. Let's go ahead and look, take a closer look on a workbench. So this is the valve block. Here we go. What we've got here is we have a very seriously machined and over-engineered aluminum block uh, that has all the different air passageways and the air outlets and so forth. Uh, then we have these black cans are the solenoid coils. Um, we have a pressure sensor. This I'm not really certain, but it looks like a pressure relief valve, possibly. This is the EAS driver pack, and inside here it takes the low voltage, low current logic signals from the EAS computer and converts them to a higher voltage, higher current uh, signal to drive the actual solenoids. And we know the solenoids are um, 12 volts, like a pulse width modulated signal. They're not supposed to be driven directly by 12 volts. So that driver pack probably has some timing circuitry in there to drive it at the proper duty cycling. So um, let's start by, uh, you know what, let's start by removing one of these collets. These are the collars here, these brass collars. Um, they're what holds the pipe, and down deep down below there are a couple of O-rings that seal the pipe. So to pull these out, you just simply start by prying and lifting, trying to make it as even as possible all the way around. If you, if you lift up too far on one edge, you'll jam it and probably possibly break off the little feet. And there we go. There is the brass collar that holds the air pipe. And inside is a O-ring. You may want to get a different tool, like a wooden tool or a plastic tool, but this is pretty easy. Here's the O-ring. There it is. These O-rings look great. You know, they are uh, shiny. Uh, they're, you know, supple, they're spongy and springy, they're not dried and cracked out, they're probably just fine. Um, before you start this, you want to do a soapy water test on all of these while the system has pressure, while it's under pressure. And the soapy water test, you've seen a couple, uh, a previous video of mine on, on YouTube where you can look for leaks at these air pipes. So let's go ahead and start with the solenoid next. So we're just um, going to open this up very carefully. You know, if you're good at taking things apart and putting it back together, this is a very easy job. If you're not good at putting things back together exactly the way they came apart, don't even try this. I mean, this really isn't that difficult, but attention to detail is extremely important. So, this is the solenoid coil, just the coil. Um, this o-ring is not important for sealing air pressure, it's just there to seal water. Then we're going to remove the actual valve itself. This is where we start getting into uh, air pressure sealing surfaces. Uh, what you want to look for are dried and cracked o-rings. Uh, you want to look for any signs of degraded rubber from the o-rings. If you see gummy, powdery, flaky, rubber. Well, it came from somewhere, and it probably came from one of your O-rings. Um, so, here we have the valve assembly, and this is sealed here. This is uh, the housing for the valve of the solenoid poles. You have a couple of O-rings here and here. These are in great shape. You can see the surface is kind of shiny, uh, supple, you know, it's not cracked or dried out, it's not perished. So let's look at the valve block, or the valve in further detail. Let's go ahead and take a Phillips on here. 
And I believe there's only three O-rings that you can actually service in each of these valves. You will notice that there are six valves. So it can get a little bit tedious to do this job. But really not that difficult. There we go. So here is the valve assembly. Oh, and here the top housing comes off. So we have an O-ring here right there on that surface that we need to replace that one's definitely original it's uh, the original one appears to be uh, kind of square in profile and not round in profile and then there are two in here there is one large one on the outer ring surface and one inner one there uh, make sure to replace all three and I'll give details on where to find uh, the best place to find uh, replacement O-ring kits. I've got a few O-rings here from uh, a company that's long since out of business. So next let's go ahead and uh, investigate the diaphragm assembly. This is a, 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 re re a replacement diaphragm assembly and the diaphragm is there as kind of a check valve for the um, air compressor. If your diaphragm assembly is broken what happens is air that's being generated from the air compressor just goes straight out the exhaust valve and you can, you can test for that. So getting into the diaphragm assembly here is the output from the air compressor and we're going to use a four millimeter Allen key. I have never opened this up. I have absolutely no idea what to expect but I have heard you, will, you should never ever even open this up unless you have a full replacement. I guess just the act of opening this up apparently will destroy the diaphragm. I've heard the diaphragm is incredibly uh, fragile and uh, it's shocking really that it's having this problem. Passageway. Let's move this out of view. And there is our diaphragm. It actually looks in really good shape. I don't really see anything wrong with it. But you can see the replacement is just going to go in its place. And the replacement's a much more substantial uh, O-ring. That looks pretty easy to replace. So let's just go ahead and pop it out and put it in the wind. The, the diaphragm just pops out and I can see what people are talking about. It, it is a fairly thin rubber membrane here that could, could pretty easily degrade. Um, Mine appears to be okay, if not severely um, just worn, but it's not certainly not, not breached or broken. This is the replacement. It's going to go in this opening here, and then we'll also replace that O-ring. We'll clean this up, too. Uh, I think really all it's doing is providing two different, uh, a check valve between two different um, passageways. The center passageway the center passageway and that outer passageway there. So really the only thing it has to seal is <clears throat> you know, the only thing it has to seal is just that surface right there that's been kind of turned uh, well you know between this outer black surface and inner black surface. So I think it's still functioning but you know you're in here might as well replace it. It's a good idea too. I haven't really discussed it. Uh, when you replace these O-rings I usually use a little bit of Teflon or if you have some pure silicone lube high quality stuff. It helps hold the uh, O-ring in place uh, while you reassemble and it also just I think helps condition the O-ring over time. It's a good idea to also clean all of these uh, mating surfaces um, before you reinstall. You know you don't want any residue on here. You want to make these surfaces as clean as pristine as possible because they are also sealing surfaces for the O-rings. Keep that in mind when you're working through each of these. Make sure all the mating surfaces are cleaned up as well. Another tip, when you're cleaning this and opening these up, make sure that there's not any dirt you know, crusted all over this thing. If this thing's covered in dirt, you have to clean it before you even get to this step because you absolutely cannot allow dirt to ingress into these valve passageways, into these airline passageways. If you do, you're, just, you're never gonna get this thing working right ever again. And they're incredibly sensitive to dust and particulates and dirt and grime. You cannot 
even begin to disassemble this from the car until you've really cleaned, just clean the crap out of it. You know, I mean, you, you, you know, even when you're wiping this down to clean it, don't be pushing debris into those valve passageways. Very bad idea. So keep that Also, make sure that when you're uh, cleaning this valve block or the actual valve piston assembly, you know, get a little bit of Teflon lube and really just kind of just make sure that it's clean. Make sure it's clean. There's no grime and dirt on it, and just give it a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a once over there. Make sure it looks nice and clean, so it'll actually seal the rings. As before, pop the collar off like I showed you, very simply, and then fish out the O-rings with a tool that won't damage any of the surfaces. Metal isn't the best, but it's okay. Now I'm going to go quickly clean this surface out inside here, just with a rag. It's got a little bit of Teflon on it. All ready for the new O-rings. It's best to put them in dry so they don't slide all over the place. Take a tool. This is a plastic tool. And I'm just kind of mashing the O-ring flat into its seating position. But you want them to both sit flat like that inside that housing. Just pushing it down gently until it mates with, on top of the other one. I can feel it kind of springing up sponging up, so I want it to sit totally flat. And done. Put the collar back in. Done. So, you know, nothing really terribly complicated here, just tedious and, uh, you know, high attention to detail. So I'm going to go through each and every one of these solenoids on each of these cans, one by one, and uh, replace the O-rings and reassemble them. And then uh, you know refit everything back into the vehicle, and that's it. I mean, it's really not terribly difficult to service the the, the valve block. I and mean, hopefully, showing you some of these components, you can see it's just they're not it's not rocket science. Uh, take your time, go one step at a time. You know, don't take the whole thing apart. Just take each you know small one piece at a time apart and put it back together, and then move on to the next piece. When you reassemble everything back into the vehicle, also make sure um, when you start things back up, leave one of the vehicle doors open and let the air compressor run for about 20 minutes before you even attempt to adjust the height of the air suspension. That will at least allow the system to pressurize. And if you really have time, allow the system to pressurize, shut the vehicle off for you know an hour, and come back once the air compressor is cooled off. So great, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments or email me directly at www.rswsolutions.com. Thanks.